Hey everyone, this is Chiki from Chiki Creates. The video for this week is part one on hopefully a series on enamel pin production from start to finish. So first off this is the design and I usually sketch my designs on my tiny sketchbook first. I do several sketches and then decide on the one I like best. So this sketch here is of Lyra from To Kill a Kingdom and I literally just took a photo of the sketch on my phone and put it into Photoshop. I changed the hue and saturation so it's easier to tell the lines when I'm drawing over the sketch. The next thing I do is actually do another sketch on top of the hand-drawn sketch. I guess you can skip this part but I want to do it so that it, it's easier to make clean lines with a cleaner sketch below, if you know what I mean. Also, I wanted to change some details from the hand-drawn sketch, which you will see in a bit. So one of my early Lyra sketches, I mean Lyra pin sketches, had her holding a trident like she did in the book and someone on Instagram liked that detail better and I agreed that it did suit her personality more. So here you're seeing me redraw trident over the sketch of her holding a pearl. Once I finished the digital sketch, I just changed the hue and saturation again like before so it's easier to tell my clean lines from my sketch lines. My settings for clean line art are just a simple hard round brush set to pressure size and with around 54% smoothing. I change the smoothing settings occasionally depending on how much stabilization I want. The settings all depend on what I need, but generally my smoothing is lower when sketching and higher when making clean line work. I'm honestly not that good at clean line work as you can tell, but I'm trying to get good as the youths of today say, I guess. Okay, so now we are in the Adobe Illustrator workspace. What I do here is basically create a new CMYK file and just like, you know, slap my PS file in there. <laughs> just go to file, then place, and then navigate to your Photoshop file or your JPEG or PNG file. 
Now, what I want to do here is to image trace my sketch to turn it from a raster image into a vector image. There are different settings, but I just use a three color just because there's like only two colors in my sketch really. And I guess there is a better setting, but this one works just fine for me, so it's just what I do. Once it's done processing, I need to expand my artwork and then ungroup the layers. These are all vector shapes now basically. What Illustrator did is to separate each block of color into its own vector shape. So you can delete this entire background like I did. Then here I'm opening Illustrator's swatch library and choosing Pantone Solid Coated, which I think is what pin manufacturers use for pin colors. Anyway, it's useful to just use this library so that you can choose colors that are more or less accurate to what you'll be getting. Some pin makers will have the actual physical Pantone color book to help them choose colors more accurately, but I checked it online and it's expensive and I'm poor, so... I think it's something really useful to have, but if you can't afford it just yet, like me, then not to worry. I haven't had much issues with just choosing a Pantone color from Illustrator's library. And if you're worried about how it will look, you can always ask for a sample from your pin manufacturer. Take note though that by sample, I mean the Manu just takes one pin first and then takes a photo of it and sends it to me. If you want a physical pin sample, I believe you would need to shoulder the cost of shipping to you. Also important to note, some pin manufacturers will ask for a fee to produce one sample, but my current one does not. Then I resize my pin to actual size, in this case 45mm height. I feel that this size will best bring out the details I have on her, especially her tail which will have a lot of different colored glitter. Now I just need to pick out the colors that I used. I just hover over the highlighted color on the swatches panel to get the Pantone code thing. <laughs> it's also at this stage where I finalize the special pin effects that I want. It's around this part where I realized I forgot to add the screen print details. So here I am just drawing circles and stuff. <laughs> so what I'm doing here is just duplicating the artwork and flipping it, then giving it all the same metal color. This is going to be the back part of the pin. I also forgot to actually merge the shapes, so it becomes one entire whole shape, but usually that's what I do. I then add some heart shapes that indicate where the pink rubber posts are supposed to be placed. And then I just copy and paste my Cheeky Creates logo from an older file and then position it at the back to where I want it to be. Here I'm just taking out my screen print details and displaying them so that the manufacturer knows which parts are screen printed. So here I'm just trying out a few things with the tail because I thought it was kind of simplistic compared to the rest of the design. So here I am adding a bit more detail. bit more adjusting here in terms of the color of the scales and also later you'll see that I'm also going to adjust a little bit of the screen printing. And that's it! 
I hope you like my final enamel pin design for Lyra from To Kill Kingdom, written by Alexander Cristo. I also hope that you've learned something from this tutorial. If you like videos like these, please do let me know in the comment section below so I can keep making tutorials. And remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye!